in the past 20 years. Now, I'm talking about church folk. I ain't talking about other folk. Christians. And, and I wondered, why is that? And as I began to read the article, the article began to say, because the pressures of living in his will, along with the pressures of this world, that some folk feel they have to just end it all. I, and I said, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't understand how, how that works. But then he gave me a, an example of what that meant. The other day I was riding in my car. And so I'm riding in my car. Uh, Sister Alicia, I, I had a bag over in the, the passenger seat. And I'm riding down the road and the seat belt thing kept dinging. And so I thought maybe the seat was something wrong. So I unbuckled mine and buckled it back up. But it kept on dinging that someone wasn't in their seat belt. And I'm saying, but it's only me in the car. And, and so I got to the red light, it's dinging. And if you've ever, ever had that seat belt thing, thing, it wears your nerves out. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, and I just wondered, what's, what's going on? So I'm looking around the car trying to figure out what's going on. And so I said, well, it can't be what I have in the seat because there's not a person over there. It's, it's just some stuff. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to, trying to bless us here. Right? And, and so I picked the stuff up and, and in between getting from the one light to the next, the dinging stopped. Then I put the stuff back down in the seat. Watch this, y'all. And the digging started back. And I, and I realized that, that the chair can't realize that it's not a person over there, but all it senses is the pressure that's being applied to the seat. God, I'm trying to help you here. And, and, what, and what God began to speak to me and say is that life is just like that. Life can't tell you what kind of pressure you have going on. It just knows that you got pressure. And when you got pressure, it begins to stress you out. But when you realize uh, that the pressure you have comes from God above, that he said that he will, he will always bless me, he will always keep me, and if I can't bear it, he'll bear it for me. So sometimes you got to give the pressure back to him. That's why he says, Father, I, I can't take this cup. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I, but, but if it's your will, I know you will give me the strength to, to be able to handle what's in the cup. Now, 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 now here's the part of the text that, that, that blessed me the most. It says, I he, he, he goes back and he prays again and, and he says to them in verse 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation for the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. But then he says, go to pray a second time. He says, my father, is it not possible for this cup to be taken away from me unless I drink it? May your will be done. He asks Lord a, a real simple question. He says, Lord, I, 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 I really don't want this cup. So then, you know, my mind began to wonder, Deacon, right? As the, as the theologian I am, and I begin to wonder, I thought about you. Because I know you'd probably ask this question. Well, why didn't he want to drink in the cup? What was in the cup that made him feel, Lord have mercy, that he couldn't drink it? That he needed help from the Father? Well, I, I, I scoured the text, scoured books, couldn't find it anywhere. So then I said, the Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to understand because I need our people to, to understand that, we, that, that, that they need to know how to handle what's in the cup. It, it wasn't tea that was in the cup. It wasn't water that was in the cup. It wasn't juice that was in the cup. So what was in the cup? I'm about to be done, y'all. And, and the Holy Spirit began to say, well, he kept saying, I'm troubled and I'm sorrowful. So I realized that some trouble must be in the cup. I said, well, but Jesus, you said that, that we would have troubles as long as we're on this earth. So that can't be the issue. But then, but then he said, I'm sorrowful. So sorrow must be in the cup. 
But then I'm reminded that he was there that day when Satan asked for Job, God have mercy. And, and, and Satan said, I would. In, that in, in taking Job out that you had a hedge of protection around him. So I couldn't quite get to him. Jesus was there, y'all. If y'all don't believe me, see the text said, it said that and, the, and, and all the sons of God were present on that day. But, but if you remove the hedge, uh, Satan, you can have him, but you just can't kill him. Uh, so it couldn't have been sorrow that had him word because Job said, naked I came into this world, naked I shall leave, but I know that my Redeemer liveth. Uh, uh, and so I wondered what was in the cup, Brother Washington. Uh, and, and, and the Holy Spirit began to deal with me and said, what was in the cup was, it was death that was in the cup. Uh, because I realized uh, that he understood that he knew how to bring folk back from death, uh, but that he had to die so that all men could still yet live. Uh, and what I'm trying to tell you uh, is what do you do when God won't change your ending story, uh, but he'll still, but uh, excuse me, what will you do when God doesn't change your ending story, uh, but you're still in the mess that you've been in? Uh, well, I'll tell you what he does, my brothers and my sister. He keeps us in perfect peace. Uh, oh God, if you don't believe me, look what the text says. Uh, the text says, uh, and the, the, the text says that after he went back a third time, uh, he says, are you sleeping again? Huh? He says, look, the hour has come uh, for the Son of Man to be delivered to the hands of sinners. Uh, rise uh, and let us go. Uh, here comes my betrayer. Uh, in other words, I don't know what happened uh, between his steps from the garden uh, to his steps back to his brethren uh, that let him realize uh, that he uh, could now drink what was in the cup. Uh, well, uh, I had to ask the Holy Spirit again, uh, and the Holy Spirit began to say, well, uh, he realized uh, that God is still a keeper. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, uh, but somebody has to know uh, that God uh, is still a keeper. Uh, he'll keep you uh, even when you're in the mess. Uh, he'll keep me on the mountaintop uh, just like he'll keep me down in the valley. Uh, do I got anybody in here, uh, anybody out there that can shout and say the Lord is a keeper? That he kept me, uh, he kept me uh, down through the years. Uh, he kept me from myself. Uh, he kept me from all hurt, harm, and danger. He kept me from my enemies. Uh, he kept me from falling. Uh, and even though uh, I was catching hell on every side, uh, he still kept me uh, while I was in the valley. Uh, oh, shucks, if we had a whole church, uh, I would say high five your neighbor uh, and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, uh, God is a keeper. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, uh, but maybe you need to understand uh, that God has been keeping you. Uh, that's why you haven't died. That's why you hadn't lost nothing. That's why you're still waking up because God is a keeper. Huh? Oh, I feel like preaching. Uh, can I have about five more minutes? Uh, and can I just share with you how I know God's a keeper? I know he's a keeper huh? because when I was sick, uh, he showed up. Uh, when I, when I, God have mercy, uh, when I felt like I was going to lose my mind, uh, he showed up. Uh, when I didn't have a dime in my pocket, uh, he still kept me. Uh, when I got fired from a job. Uh, he still kept me. Uh, I still paid the rent. God have mercy. Uh, I still paid the mortgage. Uh, I still paid the car payment because I know God is a keeper. Uh, do I got anybody in here uh, that knows that God uh, is a keeper? Uh, has he kept you? Has he kept you? Uh, and if you don't believe he's kept you, uh, just go look in the mirror. Uh, and if you can look in the mirror, uh, you see uh, that God is still a keeper. He's a keeper. That's, that's how you handle this. You got to remember, Deacon Horace, that he's a keeper. Huh. That, 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 that's all I came to tell you today, that he's a keeper. Y'all don't understand how excited I get when I hear that because I know he kept me. I, I know I shouldn't be here. I know I shouldn't be standing here, but he kept me. When no one else could, he kept me. Don't miss your assignment thinking that God can't keep you. He's kept you this long. 
he'll still keep on keeping you. I know, I know, I know, I know. Folk don't want to hear that. They can't see that because they're trying to figure out how to pay these bills. They're trying to figure out when this pandemic going to end. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do with these kids going back to school. Should I send them? Should I not? I got to send them because I got to go to work. Because if I lose my job, then we're not going to eat. These decisions folk got to make, y'all. We got to be real about it. And, and they, they're afraid because they're not believing the hype that kids can't get this virus. And they don't want to send their children to school, but, but they ain't got a choice. Thank God some parents have a choice, but some don't have a choice. And, and they, they're dealing with this, but I need you to know that, that God is a keeper. He will make a way out of no way. Reverend Brian, I, I, I get excited. Reverend Nelson, I get excited when I can look back over my life and see where he's brought me from. And I realize that he kept me. I said I was going to be transparent. Well, here, here's a little piece. You can, you, can go run and, and you can go run and just tell this guy. I'll tell you the whole story. It's real simple. I ain't always been this. And even when I've been this, I ain't always been good. Whew. But God has a way of keeping you. See, th this is it. We strive for perfection. We're not perfect. So if you're looking for a perfect church, well, just don't go to it. Because you'll mess it up as soon as you get there. If you're looking for perfect deacon board, deacon ministry, don't join it. You'll mess it up. Perfect choir, perfect musician that don't exist. Perfect ministry don't exist. Perfect, perfect marriage, mm -mm, none, none of that. Perfect children, perfect workplace. If it's got people in it, it ain't perfect. But those are the lows of life. Because yet in my imperfections, he's still a keeper. Yet, though he slay me, yet shall I live. Paul said this way, the outward man perishes every day, but the inner man gets stronger. If you can't start crucifying some of your stuff, you will never grow. Because Christ said this, he says, if I be lifted up, he'll draw all men. He'll draw all men. Can I tell you a little secret? None of us are Christ. So we can't draw nothing but on a piece of paper. <laughs> How to manage the lows of life. Remember, he's a keeper. As we end this broadcast on today, I want to say to you, I want to encourage you, if you don't know Christ in the pardon of your sins, take the time right now to just say this little prayer with me. It's real simple. Father, I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you died for my sins, but yet you got up. And you sit at the right hand of the Father, making intercessors for me. So now forgive me of all of my sins and put me in your will. If you can pray that prayer, then now you are saved. It's just that simple. Now, if you already saved, but you know, like I said, we're imperfect. So we have those moments. Those moments when we fall short. And everybody on the side of my voice, including this voice right here, we have fallen short. But guess what? I just told you he's a keeper. He's a sustainer. He's a redeemer. And the Bible says, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. So you say this prayer with me, Father. Created me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us. 
Father, I've drifted far away, but yet I know you still stand waiting for our return home. Father, right now, take me back in your fold, for we need to feel your love in your arms. And Father, I ask that you guide my steps, for I know the steps of a good man are ordered by you. Father, my spirit is now willing, but my flesh still may be weak. But in this, I trust you. If you said that prayer, God has already received you back. It's just that simple, y'all. It don't take all these elaborate prayers to do all of this. Christ says, Lo, I stand at the door knocking for those that will come. Whosoever come, let them come. So today, if that's you, all you have to do is say those prayers, and God will hear, and God will bring you home. Before we end this broadcast, let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you because we know, we understand. That life has its ups and its downs. But Father, as we stay on this, your walk, your purpose, your course, that as the road gets rough sometimes, we trust and stand on your promises that you will be the keeper the author and finisher of our faith. Father, today we come because we realize that it's not always easy. We realize that it's downright hard sometimes. But Father, we want to live for you. So Father, right now, we give ourselves back to you for this your purpose. Touch those, Father, that are in hospitals. Touch those that are in nursing homes. Touch them right now. Touch those that are working to help keep us all safe. Those that are called essential workers, Father, working to continue to help make us great. Bless them right now in a special way. Father, I ask a special prayer today for educators all over this nation. As schools have already begun to go back into session, Father. Father, I ask you to touch them right now. But not just the educators, the bus drivers, the, the cafeteria workers, the janitors, Father. Whatever position they hold, Father, I ask you right now that you would be with them. Let them know that you are still a keeper, even in the midst of a pandemic. Father, touch our young people. As they are faced with the challenges of trying to live a life with many restrictions. Father, we know that it's not easy, but we know that you can touch them like no other. As they get on buses, as they walk on college campuses, Father, as they go into the workforce, touch them right now, Father. Father, as you're touching them, Father, as you're with them, Father, I ask you, Father, that you would throw your arms around them and that you would put a hedge of protection around them. That as Satan tries to steal, kill, and destroy that, that he shall fail because you are always protecting them. Touch now those that are sick and shut in. Touch each and every ministry, not in just this state, this community, but all over the world. As virtual has become the new norm, Father, allow us to not lose the fire we have for you. And knowing that it's not about being in the building that made you special, God. It's about you just being God all by yourself that makes you special. 
For you are an omnipresent God. You can be all where and everywhere at the same time. We thank you right now. Touch this, Father, your manservant. Keep me hidden behind your cross. Pour into me that I may pour out into these your people. Bless the ministries of this church, the deacon ministry, social media ministry. Father, bless us right now as we continue to do this your will. For all these blessings we ask, Father, we thank you and we give your name the praise. Keep us in perfect peace until we are to come together again. And we'll be so careful to give your name the praise. And the people of God, we said amen, amen, and amen. Um, just as a few quick announcements, I want you to just say this. I'm excited to say this, that, that now I'm starting hopefully the second or third Wednesday in this month of August. We will resume our Bible study on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. How we're going to do that is this. We're going to live stream it on Facebook. We're going to be able to hopefully live stream it on YouTube. And we're going to do the call in and we're going to have a Zoom live. We're going to be hearing more about that in the next couple of weeks. We're going to get some information out about that to tell you each step of how to go and do these um, processes of joining in on our live Bible study. Um, with that being said, now that we have the Bible study piece up and going, that should give me a little bit of time. We're going to work on the Sunday school as, as well. We're doing it one piece at a time, try to build it back so that we can go back to being fully functional even though we're not in the building. So second or third week, we're going to work the kinks out. We're going to do a test run this week. It'll be a short message from the desk of the pastor, hopefully. If that goes well and it and it comes out well, then we'll start the second week. If I got to tweak some stuff, maybe a little, maybe the third week. But this month, August, we're starting our Bible study back. Um, myself and Deacon Wright, we're gonna get together on a schedule on how we can do it. He kind of just he looked, he kind of just shot me, <laughs> and I. <laughs> we're gonna figure out a way to to, to work out the schedule um, with with who's gonna be doing what on what Wednesday. But every Wednesday, 7:30, starting either the second. For the third Wednesday in this month, we will get the information out to you, um, either via uh, Facebook. We have to print something off. We do whatever we have to do to get into the hands of everyone who needs it. Um, so walk you step by step on how to join in Bible study on one or all of the medium platforms that we will have um, in order for you to, to participate. Amen? Also, 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 we got a very special happy birthday, birthday boy in the house. Um, um, I don't. I dare not try to ask him what his age is. But um, it's a very unique name. It's named after one of one of my favorite, very unique names. One name of one of my favorite Bible characters in the Bible, Bible personalities, and he's a personality himself. Deacon Jesse Sellers. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Happy birthday to you, sir. So today is your birthday. Amen. Amen. He looking like a spry fifty year old over there. <laughs> I said, look like. I didn't say that. That's what you were. So I, I, I'm about to be like, that pastor lied. No, I, I, that's what he looked like. That's all I said. <laughs> With that being said, I hope you have a blessed birthday on today. And, and we're going to do our very best to, to just try to lift you up and enjoy it today. Amen. Amen. Get your brother to take you out for dinner or, or something. Amen. Amen. See, I, see, I just did that. I just threw that in there, see? <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, thank all of you for being here today. Thank all of you for coming out. We pray that, that God will forever continue to bless you and keep you, and that as he keeps us, um, he will keep us in perfect peace. To my brother, amen. On today, thank you for being here. Pray that hopefully you enjoyed it, and I thank you for coming out. Uh, and please, you know, just, just let everyone know to please tune in and uh, join us. My brothers and my sisters, thank you so much. We love you. God bless you. <laughs>